I, I start thanking the organizers for the invitation and um, and also it's my privilege to be speaking after Professor Eno. I hope the, at the end of the talk the there will be some connection between the gauge symmetries and and this talk. Also, if you have any uh, any question at some point, just please interrupt me because I won't be seeing the chat. So you can just tell me if there is any question. <clears throat> okay, so the talk will be about this thing that I call semi-classical quantization, and it mainly will concern local symplectic groupoids, which I will explain, and in particular, a nice connection between them and uh, certain non-perturbative aspects of the Poisson Sigma model. So the, the talk will be like this. I, I will give a very brief introduction to what these objects are, these symplectic groupoids. Uh, the idea is that one can think of them as um, more nonlinear versions of Lie groups. Uh, then I will speak about uh, generating functions for these objects. And I will mention two, two results. So th there will be a first theorem and a second theorem about this. But the, the, the main point uh, of the talk will be the, this relation to the Poisson Sigma model. Uh, so th there will be a third result here about that. <clears throat> and as I, as I just said, the, the key point is the non-perturbative oh, okay. non uh, aspects of the Poisson Sigma model in the semi-classical limit. Okay, and uh, the outcome of all this discussion, at least to me, is that uh, with all these um, things, collecting the work of, of many people, uh, we have a full um, picture of, of the semi-classical limit of quantization of Poisson manifolds. Um, and and the, maybe the, the upshot, many of these things that I'm going to say, they are not, they, they were well known before, but I think what uh, it might be new from in this talk is that this non-perturbative aspect of it. Uh, okay, let's go into this. So the first thing that I want to do is briefly uh, introduce local symplectic groupoids. And the, the key, many of you know this from before, but if you are not familiar with this notion, um, one can think of, of two types of transformations. Ones are transformations of spaces that can be applied to any point of the space. And you also can consider collections of transformations of individual points. So this arrow A, you can think of it as a transformation of this particular point into this other particular point. And if you try to apply it to some other point, well, you, you just can't. So in this, I, I'm just trying to um, intuitively motivate the, the difference between the algebraic structure of a group that uh, can be motivated by transformations of spaces and then the algebraic structure of the groupoid. So notice that uh, in a group, you can always compose transformations, but here, if I want to compose, I need the, the following arrow to have as its source, the same uh, object as the target. So this is uh, the way that we will think about this in this talk, at least. And the idea is that what does this have to do with the Poisson geometry? Let me tell you quickly how it works. And this stems from the work of many people like Weinstein, Karasev, and subsequent. <clears throat> 
So if you have a Poisson manifold, we think locally just for simplicity, but all that I'm going to say here is can be made global for any manifold. You can think of this uh, differential equation. Uh, so this is just like Hamilton's equations, only that now the parameters here, I think of these parameters as external parameters. parameters. Um, they are just coordinates of a co-vector. And uh, the idea is that if you think of the, if you solve this differential equation, you can think that there is an arrow going from the initial condition to the, to the endpoint at time equals one. And what parameterizes the arrow, what defines the arrow, you just keep track of it. You know, you don't just remember the source and the target, but you remember the parameters that gave rise to it. There are many ways of parameterizing this, but one is like, for example, the initial point and the parameters P that you used. So these are co-vectors. There is something, um, oh, as I said, this uh, point of view was pursued by many people, including a reference for it is Alan Weinstein. And uh, you could imagine doing something similar where the parameters now are uh, function, differentials of functions, but then you will get an infinite dimensional space and you will be dealing with the flows. The key point here is that you keep the, the number of parameters finite. In particular, is, uh, these are co-vectors. So the, the, the idea is that we will think that associated to a Poisson manifold, I have this kind of groupoid transformations associated to them. So the, the, let me explain quickly the terminology here to be a bit precise. So we will be dealing with these objects called local symplectic groupoid. So as I said, groupoid is an algebraic structure generalizing the structure of a group, you can, the axioms, axioms are of the, of a category where every arrow is invertible. This is uh, an algebraic type of structure. Then the Lie modifier means that the, the set of all possible arrows and the set of all possible objects, they are manifolds and all the structure maps are smooth. Let me say something about this local. Uh, you, you know, for example, when you have a Lie group, so H, and you have the identity. If you look at the neighborhood of the identity, let's call it U. Uh, well, it, intrinsically, this is not a Lie group anymore, but it still has some particular, I mean, it still has some structure on it. Because if you take two close, two elements which are close enough to the identity, you can multiply them and get a, another element in U. That structure that you get from restricting a Lie group to a, a neighborhood of the identity is, is called a local group or local Lie group in this case. But here there is something similar. The, there is a notion of, of local groupoid or local Lie groupoid, which are the, uh, the axiomatization of what you get when you have a, an honest groupoid and you restrict to a neighborhood of all the identity arrows. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the, the point is that here the structure maps are only defined, you only need to define them for um, small arrows. Meaning that, as I said, that um, 
if if the product of two elements goes outside of this, then you you don't see this intrinsically in this object. And then finally, uh, the, the this symplectic modifier, and the idea is that the the total space of the groupoid carries a symplectic structure. So it's a two form which is closed and non-degenerate. And the, the compatibility between um, the symplectic part and the, and the algebraic part or the, the groupoid part is that when you think of the graph of multiplication, so the graph of multiplication is given by three arrows, A1, A2, and the third one is the composition of the two. So this sits inside um, three copies of this arrows manifold. If you uh, reverse the symplectic structure in two of them, this has to be Lagrangian. This has to be a Lagrangian submanifold. Uh, another quick comment that I want to give is that uh, in this picture that I was giving you before with an ODE here, uh, the local nature is related to the fact that you might only consider uh, small parameters. So the parameters are close to zero. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, somehow these objects that, I'm, that we will be looking at. There is a lot of known about these things. So, for example, if you have one such symplectic, local symplectic groupoid, then there is, exists a unique uh, Poisson structure on the manifold of objects. It's defined by the condition that the source map preserves brackets. So it sends the symplectic brackets to, the, to these brackets defined by pi. And this is called also symplectic realization because this pi could be degenerate and this one is always symplectic. So uh, when this happens, when, when your Poisson structure on M comes from such a, a groupoid, we say that this groupoid integrates the Poisson manifold. And uh, in, in a theorem of cost, Dazord and Weinstein, they show that every Poisson manifold uh, can be integrated in this way. <clears throat> the, the, I just mentioned quickly that uh, if instead of the local groupoid, so small parameters, you, you want a, a global groupoid so that the axioms are satisfied for all possible arrows, not just small ones. Uh, there might be obstructions. Um, so let me give you quick examples here um, so that we know what we're speaking. Suppose that we have a zero Poisson structure. Then uh, we can take uh, the group point to consist of the cotangent bundle. So the, an arrow is it's a covector. And I think of it as having the same source and target when the covector is based at a point X. And then what is composition of arrows? It's just the addition of these covectors in, in the fiber. So this is, um, um, sorry, and the, the symplectic structure is just the canonical symplectic structure. So <clears throat> the zero Poisson structure can be integrated this way by this groupoid made of covectors which are composed linearly. On the other extreme, if we think uh, of a um, symplectic manifold, so that the Poisson structure is the inverse of, of some symplectic structure on him. Uh, the arrows, I mean, we can take this group point to be pairs of points so that arrows are pairs of points. 
the symplectic structure, we can take it to be like this. It's a product, but then we switch the sign here so that the axioms are satisfied. And composition is just a, an abstract operation which deletes the, the point Y and gives you a new pair. Uh, and uh, okay, finally, to see that this is actually a generalization of standard Lie theory for Lie algebras. If you have a Lie algebra on the dual space, you have a linear Poisson structure where these are the structure constants of the Lie algebra. And uh, the group point here can be taken to be T star of some Lie group integrating this Lie algebra. The composition of arrows comes essentially from multiplication in the group. And here you can also take the canonical symplectic structure. So if I want, these are all global loopoids, but you can there induce local ones. I just say this quickly. Mm -hmm. In this case, if you want to see what a local groupoid, the local groupoid associated to this looks like, you have here the diagonal, so the points where x equals y, and you can take a tubular neighborhood of this, or some neighborhood, and this set of, let's say, pairs in which x and y are not so far away, this has a local groupoid structure. And here, the, to get a local groupoid out of this, what you can take is a neighborhood of the identity in the group. And then you consider instead of T star H, you consider T star U. Using multiplication, you can trivialize this to um, U times H star. And you can use the exponential, well, or the exponential goes in the other way. Exponential in the group H to, to get some uh, neighborhood of the Lie algebra isomorphic to this other neighbor. So um, if you use, I'm just saying that if you use exponential coordinates in this Lie group, uh, you get the, the local group void picture. So, <clears throat> okay, I hope in these examples, at least, it's more or less made clear what these local symplectic group points are. Um, so let me tell you quickly what these generating functions are. The idea is that it will be a function or some data that allows you to recover the, the whole structure of this groupoid or local groupoid out of, a, out of this data, a single function and something that I'm going to explain now. So the idea is it's typical in symplectic geometry. We have a, a Lagrangian. So we have a Lagrangian in, in a symplectic manifold, which in our case is the graph of multiplication. Remember that one of the axioms was that this is indeed a, a Lagrangian submanifold. And what we do is we take some other reference Lagrangian and a symplectic tubular neighborhood. And we recti the, the symplectic tubular neighborhood, what it does is rectifies the geometry that I, I try to make it more Euclidean now. But it, so that neighborhood that lives in some symplectic manifold now um, lives in a cotangent bundle. It's a cotangent bundle of some manifold. And the idea is that when you take the inverse image of, of, of this Lagrangian that you want to study, what you want is that it's the graph 
of an exact one form, which is called the generating function for, for the original Lagrangian. So I call this pair, the pair is called, it consists of this uh, like Lagrangian tubular neighborhood. So it's like a framing and the function that comes with it like this, it um, could be called um, generating function beta. And the outcome, when you apply this to the structure of a, of a locally groupoid, local symplectic groupoid, is that all the information that you had in, in this groupoid structure is now encoded in the symplectic geometry, this neighborhood, and this function. So instead of having a collection of uh, structure maps, source, target, inversion, blah, 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 you, you have uh, in, in this more generating function form. Even, even the Poisson structure on the original Poisson manifold is all encoded here. So it's a nice object to, to have around and study. Let me mention quickly that <clears throat> when we want to compare these to some structures that appear in, in quantization and star products, the, the case where M is a, it's a coordinate space will be important. In this case, there is a natural such framing like this. Uh, ah, also, I, I mentioned, I, I forgot to mention that we will be interested in framings which are adapted to the groupoid structure in a way that I won't make precise, but I, I could tell you. Anyway, <clears throat> so there is a natural framing for coordinates for some manifold. It just comes from trivializing like this the cotangent bundle. And uh, if you want to see what this boils down to, so what is a generating function? in this uh, coordinate case, well, what you want is that the, the three arrows that you multiply is A1, A2, and the product of them, it's given like this. It's a partial derivative together with the parameter P1, a partial derivative together with the parameter P2, and then you have a point X and the derivative with respect to X. So these parameters P1, P2, and X, they live here in this space, which in, in, the, in the general case I was calling X, it's the, let's say, the, the framing manifold. So let, let me tell you very, very quickly uh, two examples. Uh, when you have a, in, in Rn, you have a constant Poisson structure, so it's just an anti-symmetric matrix. It's very easy to find one of these generating functions, and it's given by this formula. It's P1 plus P2, which are covectors or elements on this dual vector space applied to X plus one half of the matrix or the bilinear form applied to P1 and P2. So this is a very simple expression for one such generating function. When the Poisson structure is linear, and remember that these are structure constants for an underlying Lie algebra, uh, what we get is um, something much more non-trivial, which is the baker campbell hausdorff series. So now these parameters P, in this particular case, they live naturally on the Lie algebra. So it makes sense to apply the baker campbell hausdorff series to both and pair this with X, which lives in the dual space. So this is baker campbell hausdorff I won't write it, but uh, if you remember, it's the logarithm of products of exponentials. In, in a Lie group. So th this is a quite non-trivial uh, series that it converges and so on. So uh, the, the general question is, do these things exist in general? Can you always find these generating functions? And the theorem is yes. I, I mean, I'm writing a paper about this and this will be in this paper. 
So for any local symplectic group point, you have like nice generating function data. This doesn't have to be Rn. It could be any arbitrary manifold. Uh, and also, if you fix the, the framing, there is a unique such generating function which vanishes when the parameters are zero. So this is one first result about this, uh, that you can always find this generating function data around the units. Um, well, let me speed up a bit. So here, as I said, to make the connection to, uh, to quantization, to certain formulas in quantization, we will examine in detail a bit more the the case where m is a coordinate space. It could be isomorphic to Rn, or it could be just a collection of open sets. So in this case, <clears throat> there is a canonical integration. Uh, and also, sorry, I forgot to mention that here, the, the Poisson structure is arbitrary, nonlinear, to be smooth. Uh, dependence on coefficient on x. Uh, okay, so uh, there is a canonical integration. The, the symplectic structure behind this is just the canonical one on the cotangent bundle and this the manifold of arrows can be seen as an open subset in, inside here. I won't say much, but the whole structure of this local groupoid comes from this formula, which defines um, this map alpha pi, which is the source. And applying some general results of uh, Kost, Dazor, Weinstein, you say that the source map together with the symplectic geometry defines all the other structure maps. So this is the canonical integration. Uh, this formula comes from the work of Karasev. <clears throat> uh, so then the question is, and this works for any Poisson structure, does this canonical symplectic, local symplectic group where it has uh, a generating function? And the answer is yes. Let me make this bigger. Oops. I mean, we know because of the theorem that it has, but it's interesting that this is an explicit formula for it. I won't detail the ingredients of the formula, but it, uh, it's not that complicated. It involves, these are Hamiltonian flows. These are Hamiltonian flows on the cotangent bundle with respect to the canonical simplicity. The maps alpha and beta, well, alpha is defined here and beta is just reversing the sign. And E is just the Euler vector field on, uh, well, it's P1, DP1, P2, dp2 so this is a nice explicit formula for for this uh, canonical integration so all these structure maps are actually generated by this nice smooth function <clears throat> okay so why am i saying this um, well one last remark is that if you start with a with a function you could try to um, generate the, the groupoid structure maps, but it's not that any function will define this because there are axioms to be satisfied. And it turns out that um, the axioms are equivalent to these uh, kind of nonlinear PDEs for, for the function S. This was discovered by, um, in a paper of Catania, Derhan, and Felder. Just a remark that behind the, the ge these generating functions in, in coordinate spaces, 
there is this system of PDEs. So uh, what is the second result? So the, the second result says the following. Uh, we are on this coordinate for some manifold. And from, the, from these formulas that I just showed, it's very clear that the whole structure um, fits into a smooth family. Smooth family. That uh, accompanies t times pi for t in zero one. So th there is nothing formal or perturbative. You can put t equals one half or t equals one. You just notice that for every t there is a construction and there is a generating function. And the the statement of this theorem, which I find quite interesting, is the following. If I take the Taylor expansion around t equals zero of this family of generating functions t pi, and I, uh, well, the, the Taylor variable I call epsilon, this gives me this, which I now explain in words quickly. Uh, what this is, is uh, an extract of Konsevich's uh, quantization formula. The, the only, the, the Konsevich quantization formula is exactly like this, only that the sum is here, is on trees. Konsevich trees, so tree graphs. And in the general quantization formula, you get uh, all graphs, including also loops. So um, another thing that I, these are weights. So th this um, this on the right side is it's a formal family of generating functions that was considered in, in that paper of Catania Durand Felder, and they use the quite non-trivial quadratic. Um, identities that these weights satisfy to show that that this object generates uh, a formal family of groupoids. But in this theorem, we just see that this whole graph and um, all these complicated numbers and so on, they appear by taking Taylor expansion of, of a very rather simple analytic formula. So the, there is no need to, well, there is nothing intrinsically perturbative about trying to integrate Poisson structures. Yeah. You, can, you can do it um, smoothly, non-perturbatively, and then you see this more complicated structure with uh, graphs and symbols and so on. Uh, another thing that I mentioned that it's inside the theorem, but I, I won't write, is that if you start with this left-hand side, you can actually um, derive the structure of this object using uh, what are called Butcher series for, for the flows involved here. So here there appear these Hamiltonian flows and also the alpha uh, we know by an early work with uh, Benoit Deran that it's also given by Butcher series, and so there is a very elementary explanation of, of the structure of this object. Um, this series probably does not always uh, convert, right? Is it yes, thanks for, for, for the remark. For, for That's the, actually the next ah, comment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Yes, let, let me say this quickly. So in the case of this Baker Campbell Hausdorff example that I mentioned, the what you get as a series of in epsilon is this expression. You multiply epsilon p1, epsilon p2, you contract with x, and you divide by epsilon. You see that only 
positive powers of epsilon appear. But this, in this particular case, the, this is analytic and, and yes, it converges. But there are examples where this is smooth. It's always smooth by construction. It's only that it might not be analytic. So if you take the Taylor expansion, it might not converge. This is not a surprise somehow. Actually, Benoit de Rand proved that if the Poisson structure is analytic as a tensor, then this thing uh, converges, but it's not a general fact. There are can, a can, can one say that it's Borel summable or something? I don't think so. I, I think uh, if, if you think of two-dimensional Poisson structure where the the information of the Poisson structure is just any smooth function, then yeah, there is no convergence at, at all. I think. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the key point here is something that I actually want to stress that, you know, C infinity functions and C W functions are, are very different. Um, so you can always take Taylor expansions of this and they, they will be formal or asymptotic series if you want, but it's very rare that they are analytic. And from the context, if you are thinking of differential geometry and so on, or even from the point of view of quantization by operators and so on, there is no reason why things should be convergent series. I can discuss this more later. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I think I ran out a bit of time, but let me be very quick about this. So we know that these um, theoretic considerations with Poisson structures lead us to, to something that is related clearly to uh, star products. So what, what is the heuristics behind this? In general, what you expect is that if you have any star product or reasonable and you um, you take the star product of these functions, which are the kernel of uh, Fourier transform, you expect an asymptotic expression like this. And the fact that this is associative implies that this object SP that appears in this fast oscillatory exponent is a generating function for a local symplectic groupoid. So this is the heuristic behind the, the, the whole thing, that in the semi-classical limit, which is captured by this, uh, this generates the structure of a local symplectic group. Uh, so let me go very, very quickly about this. Now, uh, I did this exercise of, if you take, sorry, You take Konsevich star product, but you you write it as a formal path integral like this, where the action that appears is the Poisson sigma model action that was discovered by Thomas and Ikeda and Scheller. So this is the Poisson sigma model action that appears here in the exponent. This um, measure is heuristic and is dealt with in the battalion Bilkovsky. This uh, comes from the work of Catania Felder. Anyway, so if you take this path integral expression heuristically as if it was an oscillatory integral and you replace these functions by the exponentials, you take delta to be the Fourier transform also of an exponential and so on, what you arrive to is that this, this uh, the leading term here is given by this modified Poisson sigma model action, which now has these source terms. These are delta functions evaluating the field at that point. Oh, I forgot to say that um, uh, this X and eta are fields defined on, on a disk. And these three points, Z1, Z2, Z3, are three points on the boundary. So playing this heuristic game, you arrive to this modified action. And 
you also know that the well this is this when these are critical points of this modified action so uh when you when you try to bring this down from the heuristic to something concrete what you find is a system of pdes the system of pdes is this one um what i want to point out is that this deltas appear and also the delta there is a kind of boundary condition that appears naturally uh, well i will say something about this later but the we we need to extend the this, delta the time is uh, kind of officially over oh sorry. You know, so okay you can wrap up yeah okay let me wrap up so the, i need this uh, formula for the delta but whatever that i was going to show you these nice particular solutions but i can comment on this later let me tell you what the, the theorem is here. So this is also this preprint that I'm preparing, but this particular is in, a, in preparation. I have to check it, double check. <clears throat> in any case, so there is this well-defined, this is a mathematical statement. So there is this well-defined system of PDEs. And Whenever I have a solution of, of that system, I can plug it into this functional and I get a function of the parameters. And th there are two claims. One is that <clears throat> solutions always exist. It's an existence and classification of solutions for that system of PDE. Solutions exist and are classified by triangles smooth triangles in this uh, local symplectic groupoid and moreover uh, this functional uh, operation coincides with the canonical generating function for any solution you recover this canonical symplectic function um, this gener uh, generating function. I meant to say more about the details of, of these uh, solutions, but I, I think I, I went over time with the preliminaries. So let me just say that there was a, a connection between these Lie theoretic aspects with Poisson manifolds and the Poisson Sigma model, but mostly when the source of the Poisson Sigma model is a square, and now we found a very concrete um, relationship between the, these non-perturbative finite solutions, semi-classical solutions, and um, the Lie theoretic perspective. And also we, we know that this can be evaluated by these functional methods. So I, I think I'll just stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Um, may I? Yes. Uh, yes well, first of all, thank you for a very nice talk. Um, thank uh, you, Dean. Over here. Um, yeah, maybe I'll even uh, turn on the camera. Um, so, um, my question is if you take a Lie algebraid and uh, um, look at uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Poisson, linear Poisson structure in the dual vector bundle. And yes. then apply what, what Do you, you see this? Yes. Will you get uh, this explicit formula for, you know, for, for local symplectic uh, groupoid, mm -hmm. uh, using the Lie algebraid. Uh, so have you, have, uh, have you done, have you tried that? So yes. Kind of Yes, BCH formula for... Yes, yeah, yeah, I see what you are pointing at, maybe, that if, if you if you have a groupoid, you would like to have a BCH type formula, and one way of doing it is to take T star of that groupoid, which is a groupoid over this Poisson manifold, and apply it what I just said, right? Yes, that's, that's, that's the idea. Yes, 
asking. Uh, yeah, in principle, I tried this and in principle it works. You, you get a, a complicated BCH because now, as you know, the structure constants are structure functions. So, you know, IJK, they depend on X and you, you will get all sorts of derivatives and so on. One uh, caveat, though, is that, uh, I mean, you, you get something. I, I didn't push hard enough, maybe, to, to get the, the expression for all the terms. You can certainly uh, codify them with uh, Konsevich diagrams. But um, what, one thing that I should say is that all, all this second part where we relate to quantization and, and the explicit formula, uh, where is it? It's, it's all for coordinate Poisson manifold, right? Uh, on the other hand, we do have some results. Uh, sorry, we do have some results with uh, Marcout and Maria Amelia Salazar about uh, well, that's a, for any Poisson, for any sorry, any manifold and any algebraid. There is an analog of the BCH construction. It's only that instead of being given by a series. It's the structure maps are given by solutions of ODEs. So uh, I'm just maybe answering you that if you want to get a, a local formula, yes, you can. You sit down, you do exactly as you said, and you get this series with all these derivatives. But if you want something global, then what you do is you pick a connection, you use some uh, spray and blah, blah, blah. And then you get the, the structure functions of the groupoid described explicitly in terms of ODEs instead of uh, this um, series. Well, yeah, it's it's not even so much the uh, well the Taylor series as well as uh, we were just discussing all well, that, uh, yeah, that, 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 that generating function is as bad as pi, right? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Yes. But uh, this uh, the integral formula that that uh, you know that you got from uh, Karasyov's. Uh, yes. Uh, that, I mean that, that that would be very nice to apply in this case. I think when let's say yes on the basis some Rn. Even. Yes. I you mean when here m is Rn and you have some algebra uh, over Rn. Yes. Yeah. So it was so that you could write down like this this nice closed formula that 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 that, that you did with. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. I embarrassingly I started this and I never finished it, but <laughs> yes, I should pursue it further. Any further questions? Yeah. Hi, Ale. That's a nice talk. Can I ask a question? Hi, Mark. Yes. So, um, why can you try to explain in some way? why uh, we're only getting the tree uh, graphs and what you think that means? Oh, yeah. Well, in, in a very quick, um, I mean, a few theoretic answer, when you have this, um, if, you, if you go back to, to this uh, path integral, uh, in, in, very, in great generality, if you think of this as an oscillatory integral, uh, on the one hand, you expect the critical points of, of the exponent to, to appear as a leading contribution, and this is called the semi-classical limit. But also, on the other hand, you can uh, do perturbation theory and expand everything in diagrams, and then you see that you always get the fact that tree tree level graphs are the semi classical contribution. But th let me tell you one more thing that I actually <laughs> prepared as a is final. It, is, isn't this in general? But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's in general. Yeah. yeah. So it's a general fact, but. Um, let me tell you something that maybe answers this a bit more. Remember that I had this expression where you have an amplitude and, and this thing, right? Actually, what you can call, or people in semi-classical analysis call semi-classical limit, is not only this part, but also uh, the limit of h to zero of this coefficient. 
And uh, what we expect from this is that this gives you a half density on the symplectic group, of, well supported on the graph of multiplication. So this, uh, let me call it A0, this will give you a half density on the graph of multiplication and it will satisfy an analog of um, associativity, meaning that you have this Lagrangian, which is graph of multiplication, it ha comes with this half density. And when you kind of do the associativity condition, this holds in the appropriate enhanced category. There, this is described, for example, what, when you enhance Lagrangian submanifolds with half densities, this is called enhanced symplectic category. But in any case, I'm, the end point that I want to make is that the, uh, when you see what this is from the point of view of the Konsevich graphs, this has one loop. So it's, it's, it's not completely fair to say that uh, in the semi-classical limit, you only see uh, zero loops. The one loops also have an interesting contribution and uh, yeah, and the, the geometric in interpretation of them is as, as this enhancement of multiplication. I have a student, my student Gabriel is kind of working on that. We already, from the pure Poisson perspective, we already know that any symplectic groupoid can be enhanced, not even local, it could be global symplectic groupoid. So there are no obstructions? Sorry? You don't encounter any obstructions at, at no. one? Like no, like no, no BV anomaly or anything of that sort? Well, not, uh, maybe to make more clear what I'm saying, uh, suppose that you have a symplectic groupoid, local or global, and you want to take the graph of its multiplication, which is a Lagrangian submanifold, and you want to enhance it with, with this um, uh, half density that satisfies this um, let's say, uh, quadratic associativity type ex equation that you can imagine, right? It means that when, when you compose three arrows in two different ways, right? So only that you translate this to the half density. In any case, Okay, this is the object, and you may wonder, can you always find such a thing? And yes, always exists. For all G exists A0. 